Hello, good afternoon, or good morning, wherever uh, you are in the world. Uh, my name is Kate Orff. I'm the director of the Urban Design Program here at Columbia University. And we've organized this um, online webinar to sort of answer in real time some of the questions that you may have uh, about the program. We are incredibly excited that you're interested about the program and interested in the program. And um, so we prepared a very brief slide presentation to give you a broad overview of how we work and what we are focusing on. Um, and then we also have a question and answer session uh, together with a group of current students, former students, and the assistant director, David Smiley. Um, so I'll lead you through a couple of slides now. This is just to say that we are extremely um, welcoming group here at Columbia. Um, we work together in groups on some of the most challenging and pressing and urgent conditions of now. Um, we have a, an absolutely extraordinary uh, faculty. This is a slide of um, a mix of the current faculty in our spring semester studio uh, that includes um, scholars of uh, water and research, individuals with very different backgrounds from um, housing and resilience, disaster recovery, um, health and public, uh, public space and urban design uh, to social capital um, and a whole range of different ex uh, expertise. So I think a unique um, aspect of the program is, and, and a real strength of the program is simply the people that teach in our program and who are incredibly dedicated. So that's me on the right hand side as the director and then uh, the other pink box is David Smiley who will be leading us in a question and answer session and to, to, together we um, run and administer the urban design program at Columbia. Uh, this is a snapshot of Avery Hall where we are housed um, along with the world famous Avery Library that you can see on the ground floor there. And so our classes are um, both in Avery Hall and also in a large generous studio space in Fairweather. Um, it is on Columbia's Morningside campus uh, right on 116th Street uh, on the subway. And I will just say that um, New York obviously is a lab for our um, study of urban design. And there is no better place to study urban design than in New York City. So I have a few um, descriptors of the coursework and the student experience. Uh, because really, when you come here, you will be immersed in a, um, and enveloped in a student experience that encompasses sort of urbanism, landscape, um, history, theory, and activism. So we are a uh, post-professional degree program. It is a one calendar year program um, that consists of three semesters. We start in June uh, for our summer semester, and then we have a semester in the fall and a semester in the spring. So it is an intensive uh, one calendar year program, and I just wanted to make a, a special notice that, uh, that we have a three-year STEM designation, um, and so we are STEM designated program. So now some words on the summer semester, which is when you arrive uh, here in New York City, uh, and we kick off the, the sort of learning in June. Being a post-professional degree program, um, many of you, well, you must have essentially a bachelor's degree in architecture or landscape architecture or an accredited degree in planning. And what we uh, really aim to do in this first summer semester is to expose you to a very different way of thinking about the city. Um, importantly, um, you will come to this program knowing the basics of design. However, um, we strongly believe in the urban design program at Columbia that um, becoming an urban designer and understanding the agency of the urban designer requires an incredibly strong stance of activism and engagement and listening and being able to communicate your ideas, develop narratives, and develop broad front engagement strategies. So this is just one example of one class in the summer studio which requires and, and helps teach you uh, how to ask questions, how to engage um, community members in a broad array of, of urban topics. It's called sort of a narrative urbanism approach. We also believe in making and the art and craft of design relative to advancing urban design ideas. So this is another 
quick snapshot of the sort of collaborative nature of the summer studio and how we toggle back and forth between making, doing, and interacting with, and you can see that map in the background, the sort of physical geography of New York City and of course the politics of New York City and how these two um, uh, sort of um, layers of facets um, have combined to make uh, the sort of New York urbanism that we, we know today. This is a design, Many some of your questions have involved the level of research versus design. I would say this is a design-driven uh, program. We have um, work in teams to develop design projects in the studio. However, these uh, projects are driven by a research process. And, um, and so this is just one example of the kind of experience you would have over the summer in a pinup. This is Professor Nans Voran, who is our coordinator of the summer studio, and he has an expertise in architecture, urban design, landscape, and in particular, video and narrative storytelling. Um, here's some more examples about how we move um, from the idea of making models and, and designs and drawings inside the four walls of the studio at GSAP, but we also very much are an outward-facing program. We go out into the community, out into the landscape, in this case an agricultural field uh, north of the city, to, uh, to begin to um, develop our design strategies. So you think you're coming here to learn more about more about drawing and making, but you also need, you know, I, we, we strongly feel that to be an effective urban designer, you need this um, ability and uh, this facility with um, facilitating workshops, with engaging with community members uh, to, been able, to be able to sort of instigate a transformation process in the urban context, not just to sketch diagrams that will sit on a shelf somewhere. So it's a very exciting um, and dense semester. And in that summer semester, you also learn uh, software, uh, and um, uh, this sort of craft of video making, and we also have an intensive urban history and urban theory class that all incoming students take to develop kind of a baseline around uh, the sort of theoretical backdrop um, um, of urban design and urban form. The second semester in your um, course of study is, is in the fall, starting back up in September. And the fall semester has been characterized as one that explores what uh, the city means at a regional scale. What, is, what are the sort of regional systems uh, that um, comprise a, a larger kind of urban space or, or sort of urban territory? Um, this is a group of students um, moving beyond the classroom, and we begin to work up in the Hudson River Valley, uh, which is a cluster of smaller towns and cities uh, in the New York environs um, that really um, has a strong relationship, of course, to New York City, but has its own set of issues. So this is our real strong uh, sort of regional studio, uh, and it involves incredible amount of travel as well as um, interaction with communities. This is a, an image of a Hudson Valley barge meet in Kingston, New York, where um, students, uh, local community activists, uh, regional scholars, et cetera, all convened around um, a set of questions revolving housing, landscape, and equity uh, at the Hudson River's edge. And in many cases, you will get your feet wet in this program. Um, we also um, advocate for um, really strong place-based and site-driven explorations. So this is a, um, and those explorations then get translated into very powerful and compelling design projects and design narratives. This is just one example of two former students that you see here whose actual project for Newburgh developed um, in the fall uh, urban design studio context was then picked up and carried forward by the city itself as an initiative. So it's this sort of um, uh, reciprocity between acting and uh, as designers and obviously as, as educators and as students um, within the space of Columbia GSAP, but having our work have a greater impact beyond the four walls of the, the university that I think we are particularly proud of. We have very active crit critique sessions with local practitioners. Another um, extraordinary opportunity of studying in New York is that you will have access to not only Columbia's global network of alumni, but there is obviously a, a very robust um, 
a robust um, network of practitioners here on the ground in New York City. Many of our uh, graduates of our programs are senior positions in very large firms or in um, uh, the City of New York City Planning Department or the Office of Resilience, et cetera, et cetera. So these are just some snapshots into some of these very interactive open house types of crits that we have, design critic sessions that we have uh, in the fall semester. And then finally in the spring semester, um, this is um, the sort of culmination of um, the three semesters of work where we shift our attention to uh, the scale of the globe. And um, our curriculum in all three semesters directly addresses the fundamental challenges of the Anthropocene and of climate change at a variety of scales and sites and, site and situations. However, the spring semester is where we really focus on um, really the kind of the global scale and the challenge of cities and landscapes uh, uh, needing to adapt and thrive in an era of climate change and an era of um, increasing um, inequity uh, and, um, and so and an era where we need to think profoundly differently about what infrastructure is. Um, and so within the course of this semester, um, in the past years, we have gone to many cities around the world, um, and these are organized workshops with local partners, local universities, uh, mayors of cities, et cetera, and where we really aim to um, investigate the ecological infrastructure and programmatic challenges on the ground of these cities and spaces. Um, and so this year, for example, we're going to Addis Ababa Baira, uh, in, in Ethiopia, Baira, Mozambique, uh, and Tel Aviv, Israel. But these, that represents a huge range of, of geographies. The spring semester also has been focused around the topic of water um, and, you know, has been titled Water Urbanism. So um, the idea b behind this uh, string of studios that has been developed um, in collaboration with the Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes is that, you know, essentially in this era of, of climate uncertainty and climate change, uh, that water will be a defining characteristic of the urban territory and of, of um, global climate change and equity um, moving forward. And we see it both as a sort of an indicator of uh, the threat, uh, but also as a generative and connective force in urban design. And so um, in this particular semester, whether it's through looking at the lens of drought or scarcity or abundance, flooding, sea level rise, et cetera, we um, begin to study uh, cities and systems through the lens of water in order to foreground site, context, people, ecosystems, and territory. This is, uh, again, the three sites that we'll be visiting starting in January and February. Um, and just a snapshot of two of some former uh, uh, sites that we have visited, for example, in Calcutta in India, in the Sundarbans in Amman, Jordan, being a particularly um, rich uh, travel experience. And just to say that during the course of our travels, we meet with individuals, NGOs, nonprofits, universities, etc. We experience um, the countryside. We interview, in this case, farmers and uh, uh, local residents. Uh, we explore um, geographies. This gentleman in the center here is one of the foremost uh, geologists of the Middle East. Um, and we study um, this sort of a water infrastructure context over time. And now I'm just going to flash through a couple of slides of student work to give you a sense of, of how um, the student work is expressed and how the study and the sort of very on, um, rigorous sort of on-site travel then manifests in a series of students' projects. In this case, students in Amman, Jordan, were looking to sort of capture rainwater on-site, um, although Amman is experiencing drought and, and uh, is, I think, the fourth uh, 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 city in the fourth kind of greatest moment of crisis relative to water globally. Um, they're also experiencing extreme uh, flooding during rainfall events. So this was a kind of reinterpretation of an ancient system of water holding and capture 
Um, we, our students are among the best in the world in visualizing three-dimensional complex problems, whether it's um, a topographic map or an urban uh, 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 grid or an urban uh, substance. Um, and then again, translating not only the systemic thinking, but sort of grounding that in the sites and places where people live. And so um, now I'll, I'll hope, hopefully that has given you a, just a basic overview of our course of study. Um, I think that um, it is clear that uh, the program is a design-driven program, is informed by research, and we are deeply focused on cities and regions as agents of resilient change and on the role of design in redefining 21st century urban landscapes. And our graduates are equipped uh, to um, engage in uh, the challenges of the future, which I see very much uh, to be, as you see on this slide, limiting global warming to <laughs> even one and a half degrees Celsius and the incredible transformation in land, energy, industry, transport, and cities that that will require. So through this rigorous three-semester curriculum, through the immersive experience of being a student here and having access to the incredible range of uh, seminars um, and lectures uh, throughout the Columbia campus through participating in studios like the Water Urbanism Studio, uh, through this uh, design-driven process of testing and iterating, and the reciprocity between our research into policy and issues and our focus on projects and places, and through our amazing uh, faculty, as represented here by uh, Gita Mehta, um, you will um, be truly equipped and, I think, um, uh, to uh, begin to engage in the very real and, quest and pressing urban questions of now. So I'm going to kick it over to um, our Associate Director, David Smiley, to help um, introduce and, and introduce our participating students, and we'll get on with the Q&A session. Thank you. We're happy to have you here, so to speak, and uh, we hope we can answer all your questions today. Um, and don't forget, you could send us email um, anytime if you have other questions, because um, I'm sure you'll come up with more after we finish speaking. I just want to reiterate a couple of points that uh, Kate made. Um, the first is that, yes, it's three semesters, one calendar year, um, and be ready for incredibly hard work, um, but also uh, an incredibly collaborative community. Uh, that generates incredible friendships and work relationships, and it's something that um, everybody comes away from this program um, uh, kind of fondly realizing how good it is to work with other people who are interested in similar issues. Uh, sometimes you argue, but that's also part of the, the world of, of making things um, in complex places. Secondly, I'd like to um, um, note that ours is a post-professional degree. You're all uh, if you're applying and um, you have some kind of professional degree already. And so we want you to know that we expect you to uh, ramp it up, challenge yourself, um, grow, and um, create something beyond um, your previous experience. And we will challenge you to do so. And also know that um, that's not just working here at GSAP, but also taking courses and engaging with people at the university. Some of the questions that I received had to do with that. And it's very much about you creating a path for yourself through the resources of the School of the Arts or international affairs or public policy all over the university. And we provide you with space, meaning time, to do that. Um, but it's up to you um, to kind of take it that extra mile. So we really want you to understand this as beyond uh, your first degree and entering a very um, challenging um, applied research realm and an intellectual realm about cities and urbanization. Uh, finally, um, we should say, or I feel it's always something we say, that it's called urban design, and we spend a lot of, a lot of time talking about cities, but it's perhaps better for us to talk about um, urbanity, which is a, the way which we live together, collectively, and that's in a city, in a suburb, in a desert, um, on, on the ocean, near a river, that, that cosmopolitanism, or living among others, and dealing with the complexities of ourselves and nature and the kind of um, historic interaction is what we mean by urbanization and thus urban design. So um, it's not just about cities, I think as Kate, Kate indicated as well. 
So I'll have some more points to make for you um, after um, we get some of the students to um, talk and I'll answer some questions specifically. So um, I'm going to let the students introduce themselves. We have three current students and one alum. And so I'm going to start immediately to my right and take it away, Nina. Introduce yourself and take, take it away. Perfect. Um, so thank you for the presentation. Uh, I am Nina Lish and I uh, completed my undergrad this past year in Philadelphia and directly moved to New York City to start this program and really, like Kate mentioned, hit the ground running in June. Um, but I think the really intense part of the program is um, meeting with all these people from different places and uh, different backgrounds and forming teams and doing research together that kind of enriches your prop your project from um, maybe the experiences you had formerly. So I had worked in offices um, in Philadelphia and done research um, around cities and around um, uh, development there, but uh, being able to come to New York City has been a really great experience and collaborating with new people. Okay. Hello, my name is Sophie Lee, and like Nina, I just completed my um, uh, Bachelor of Architecture in Pittsburgh and graduated in May and also directly moved to New York City after that. Um, just briefly about why I chose Columbia UD. Um, the MSA UD at Columbia initiates projects in New York and New York deals with um, challenging urban, cha um, urban issues and that's what was really intriguing for me and interesting for me. And um, also we all work in groups for all three semesters. And that is also an important part when you're studying urban design and um, learning to communicate better with your classmates and your workers in the future. And yes. Hi, my name is Hugo Bobea. I'm from Caracas, Venezuela. I majored in architecture back there, and I graduated in 2018. And then I started working for an NGO developing uh, tactical urbanism projects across the city of Caracas for about a year. Um, so back in undergrad, I developed a strong interest in the urban realm. And to me, the blend between Columbia University and New York City, which in my opinion is in itself a, a school, uh, laid out the perfect scenario for me to come here and, and pursue the idea of become, becoming an urban designer. Uh, I know that some of you asked about how the daily life in studio is, and I gotta tell you that it's challenging, and in a positive way, um, every day we're reflecting on real issues and how we as urban designers should develop a set of tools and a way of thinking to address these issues. And the program definitely challenges us and pushes us to uh, dig deeper, to go beyond, to come, uh, come up with bold ideas, but at the same time grounded uh, ideas. And I think that one of the things that I enjoy uh, the most is, as you um, heard uh, Kate mention, we are in this constant process of going out uh, uh, we, during the summer, we went to the five borders in New York City. This semester, we've been working in the Hudson Valley, interacting with uh, not only the places, but also the communities there. And next semester, we'll be going to uh, the Great Reef Valley in the Middle East. So um, to have the opportunity of uh, exchanging or having um, that everyday exchange with the uh, urban realm and with the people is actually uh, a great em uh, environment and a great setup if you want to become an urban designer. So that is one of the things that I enjoy the most about the program. Hello, uh, my name is Alex Burkhardt. I just graduated this past spring. Um, my background is in architecture. I got my um, BARC in California, um, and after that I worked for three years as um, an architectural and urban designer before coming to Columbia. Um, during that time I was working kind of at a, um, at a very regional and kind of community-based scale, and I was really interested in kind of scaling up. Um, and therefore was really interested in Columbia's program. Um, I was very drawn to its approach, um, its multi-scalar pedagogy, really kind of looking at um, urban design at various scales and how that influences um, design and form. And so that was really what drew me to the program. Um, additionally, with um, kind of climate change right now, I was really um, kind of wanting to study urban design through that lens of kind of our constantly changing climate and environment and how we as designers can um, kind of take on um, role as agents. And so that was really what, what drew me here. Um, and now I am working in New York City as an urban designer. Um, and it's been great to really apply the skill sets that I learned at Columbia um, professionally here. 
Okay, thank you all. I'm sure you'll have some more thoughts after I go through a few questions. Um, and so we have received uh, your questions and I've tried to organize them a little bit to um, um, catch some issues that I think are really important. Um, several people asked about the structure of the studios and I think that is pretty clear. The three studio sequence, um, summer, fall and spring, New York, Hudson Valley Region International. Maybe we could add to that there are um, usually, depending on the number of students, but six to seven uh, full-time faculty who are also teaching together. I showed you the very first slide, which is our spring studio teaching team, but um, in each semester you have a, a unique uh, special team that's sort of put together specifically to help advance the issues and the geographies that are kind of embedded within that studio. Yes, um, the, the, the word collaborative is something you'll hear a lot, um, and part of that has to do with the fact that um, uh, beyond the academy, um, uh, urban design involves so many professionals, so many governmental entities, so many stakeholders that everything needs to be understood collaboratively. So a desk crit will consist not unlike of us around the table, three or four students, two or three faculty, and it'll be more like a workshop at the desk rather than a crit with one-on-one. -on -one. So it's very much a back and forth discussion. And so our, our pedagogy tries to mirror the world that an urban designer will be entering into. Um, another question had to, several questions had to do with um, work in the Global South or in Asia and African sites. Um, and in the spring semester, uh, number one, uh, as you saw from Kate's presentation, we travel the world often in the Global South. Um, and um, in addition, there are courses uh, outside of urban design, uh, well, some of our own seminars, but also architecture school seminars, or as I mentioned earlier, um, classes in other programs at the university, which deal with human rights, that deal with pu public policy, um, both in the North and the South, globally or hemispherically. So um, uh, there is a considerable effort to understand the world, um, um, the developing problems um, and how they have affected different communities in different places. Um, a few other uh, f people asked about the um, role of sustainability, and I think um, in particular, uh, we take sustainability as a, as a kind of larger frame. Uh, we don't teach, um, you know, how many, um, um, you know, uh, how much you need to change the, the heat of water per um, some building or system, but we teach sustainability as a kind of process of engaging different ecologies, different technologies, different stakeholders, and different actors. Um, and it's important that it's part of our daily life. It's not any one particular thing. Um, a few other um, people asked about the difference or the role of la between landscape architecture and architecture and urban design. And um, I'm sure others will have much to say about it, but quite simply, we want to bridge all of those disciplines. We are not um, trying to pigeonhole um, any kind of professional activity because the world is not pigeonholed. The problems that we face are not narrow. So in many ways, um, our whole goal is to overcome uh, some of the definitions, the traditional definitions of these professions. I'd like to just um, expand on that a little bit, and that is part of the faculty mix in each semester. We really try to, to do exactly as David has described. Um, so um, typically there is at least one, if not two, landscape architects on the teaching team, an architect more focused at the building scale, and more sort of um, individuals at the urban design scale that are all kind of working together. So just as an example on our our spring teaching team, um, I'm a registered landscape architect, but working as an urban designer for 20 years. Uh, we have um, Dilip Dakuna, who is an architect and a planner, but who is focused on water uh, in cities. Um, we have Gita Mehta, who is an architect by training, but has really advanced um, an understanding of uh, social uh, networks and social capital. Um, and then the list, uh, Thaddeus Pawlowski, who's an architect and a planner, but whose expertise is in resilience and disaster recovery. So there's truly a mix of, of uh, and it is, uh, I don't want to say post-disciplinary, I feel like it's sort of 
pre-disciplinary in the sense that <laughs> if you're teaching in this program, you, you have a very different mindset, uh, and as David has explained, um, you, you don't approach uh, your problems relative to like, well, I think these five things because this is my training. You're looking at issues and sites and spaces very holistically and working together. Um, in addition, for instance, I'm an architect and a historian, um, and I teach a history seminar, but I also teach in the studio. So um, there is a really great, great mix of people, and it's really exciting for the faculty as well, I might add. Um, um, another bunch of questions have to do with the portfolio and admissions, and um, I'll go quickly through that, but feel free to email me or the admissions team about it. One of the um, key things is basically um, someone asks, what should we show? Well, quite simply, show your best work. Maybe do the students want to weigh in on that? The, about, the students yeah. should definitely weigh in on that, How yeah. do you put, maybe you go about your portfolio or anything around that? Uh, well, I think that one of the important things to keep in mind when you're uh, putting together your portfolio to send it to Columbia is to, um, first, yes, collect your best work, best work and show that, but at the same time, think of what you're going to do here, what you want to do here, and how your work can actually reflect that, that vision uh, that you have for the program. I think that could be uh, an amazing way to, to show uh, what you want to do and the potential you have. So yes, that's what I would do if uh, I would apply. That's great. And then also just maybe, Nina, you can mention too, but I would just say um, our expectation is not that you have a lot of urban design in your portfolio exclusively. I mean, we recognize that you're coming with a bachelor's in architecture, a bachelor's in landscape architecture. Nevertheless, you might want to have a statement um, that is clear about why you're interested in urban design at this moment. So don't be alarmed. We're looking for um, potential in the portfolios. We're looking for um, systematic thinking and organized thinking, um, but we are very mindful that the reason you are applying to an urban design program is not because you have already um, completed urban design. So just a note on that. Anything else to add? No, I think you, Hugo kind of covered it. I mean, okay. your best work, but also um, showing your vision of what you think um, design could kind of be or should be. It doesn't have to just be an urban design project. It could be any kind of project. Um, and again, if you have specific questions about certain kinds of projects, please feel free to um, get in touch with me or the admissions folks. It's really important that you let us know who you are as a designer, as a thinker. Um, we know you don't know urban design. That's why you're coming here. Um, just one other, a couple of points about um, working and jobs. Um, as as um, Kate mentioned, we are STEM approved, so you have permission to apply for, to stay in the US for three years after you graduate from the program. Uh, that took us a long time to make happen and it's very successful. We're very pleased with it. Um, we, uh, some people asked about um, working during the program and that's an individual decision, although we, we're, we expect that you'll be spending most of your time um, working here, um, but some people are really good at managing the time, so again, please talk to us if you, if you have um, questions about that when you get here. Uh, I'd, like, I'd like to just add a tiny bit, and then maybe Alex, you can weigh in. Um, but um, I will say that this is a one calendar year program, and you are at Columbia University, one of the finest universities in the world, and you have access to every concert, every you know play, every lecture, and. So although um, students sometimes say, oh, I would like to continue working or I w I'm going to do a competition for free for this office, I would just recommend, although, uh, that you focus on being a Columbia student and getting the most out of your experience here while you are here. And that could just be as simple as taking a hike in the Hudson Valley <laughs> because the work um, will be there the urban design uh, graduates of this program are in very high demand uh, across the United States and in and in um, and in firms around the world. So I would just recommend that you think about seeing this year as something very special and as something very apart from frankly working in an office. There are other ways, maybe Alex was a TA, you can talk about that, but there are other ways that Columbia has scholarships and work study 
that is less intensive that can help you, um, you know, if you need financial support during the program. Any thoughts there? Yeah, I would definitely, if you're interested, recommend um, in applying to the, the teaching um, TA positions. Um, I did that in the fall, which is a great opportunity to A, work, but also B, I mean, it's a great experience. Um, you know, as a student, you're getting some professional experience in academia. You're working with professors who, as Kate mentioned, are practitioners. Um, and it's really, it's an interesting networking opportunity. Um, I really, I think that because you have so many studio professors each semester, you're just constantly meeting um, new practitioners in New York, maybe even regionally. And it's really an amazing opportunity to kind of think about what you want to do with your career. Um, one of the things that Kate had said to me when I was applying to Columbia was, you know, use this year to really explore what interests you, and, and that kind of falls in line with using your, your year wisely, but it's your time to really identify what it is that excites you in urban design and you want to do, and, you know, there's definitely ways in which the program allows you to do that. Um, another set of questions had to do with um, um, the career, career assistance. Um, and uh, there's a very helpful career center here at GSAP uh, that helps um, uh, all of the students. And there are events that start even in the summer where you're meeting professionals, some of them alumni. And um, we, um, we, it's really something we try to assist all the students with. Um, and uh, there'll be some things coming up that they're really gonna be interested in um, after the, the, the holiday break. Um, and so, uh, I think um, the other thing about professionals and, and, and careers um, is that um, our review process with, with outside reviewers and juries and workshops, you will be meeting um, dozens and dozens of professionals um, here in the city and also regionally. Um, it's not like you can go up to them and give them your card while you're um, presenting your project, but you learn about the landscape of different kinds of firms, different kinds of practices, right here in New York as well as the region. So you will encounter a lot of the people who are leading the profession um, in urban design. And so you will, you will understand something of that landscape um, during your, your time in, in the program. Um, yeah, and the Career Services Office um, can help you prepare your CV and do a portfolio review. Uh, and, and assist with um, obviously connecting you to our network of alumni. We also have um, uh, uh, mentors programs, et cetera. But as David mentioned, there's that level and then there's really just this notion of the Columbia kind of network of, of, of alums that I think um, is, you know, spans the United States and, and cities around the world and um, our, our alums are so diverse, they're leading schools of architecture and design, they're deans of schools, they're um, directing um, city planning departments around the world, they're working in offices, et cetera. So there's truly a sort of a networked approach that I think you'll find um, to be very useful. Um, the last thing, I, um, uh, the last question that comes up has to do with um, software and um, the, the kind of learning of the various kinds of softwares uh, that we use professionally from GIS to After Effects, the works. Um, both in our program and at GSAP as a whole, there's, a, there's a, an array of courses that deal with that. Um, so there'll be lots of choices, um, as well as if you're specifically interested in one type or another. Um, our idea, our, our, our larger goal is that you're exposed to these tools as part of the design process. It's really important to us that these are not merely tools, but they're, they're methods of accomplishing your goals as designers. But there are many, many options here, and they're increasing all the time. So with that, I'm just wondering if the students have any last thought, any last um, warnings, or <laughs> last um, Well, uh, the other thing about software, and then maybe you guys can speak specifically to that, is, um, um, you know, we, we have software instruction uh, in the summer and then obviously incredibly intensive GIS courses, et cetera, in the fall. Uh, but um, again, we like to nest that within a discovery process. So we do have tutorials and t teaching assistance and one-on-one in -on -one instruction. Uh, nevertheless, uh, there, there are a range of softwares that it would be useful for you to have some working knowledge of um, when you matriculate, such as the Adobe Suite 
Illustrator, Photoshop, etc. Um, obviously, AutoCAD and um, and um, you will be taught GIS here as well. Um, um, but um, students always come with a wide range of skills. Some people are complete rhino wizards, right, and can model anything in five minutes in rhinos, and others have not yet been exposed to that software. So we try to essentially level the playing field during your um, summer semester here, um, but nevertheless, we do ask you as students to sort of take initiative, work with the tutorials that all of our faculty have set up, and, and get yourself uh, to a real um, uh, uh, level of strength with software so it can just be a tool for you rather than a, and a kind of a burden. So, I would add to that as well because you're always working in teams and studio, you also have the ability to work with your colleagues and really learn programs and tools and skill sets from them. So it's a really great opportunity to not only learn it in the classroom but use your colleagues as a resource and really um, kind of form the best projects that you can using all of your different skill sets and strengths. Yeah, I think working in studio has been a really great way to both um, engage with different people, maybe across projects. So you might be focusing on one topic and learning about one thing and then participating in other desk crits, you start to learn what others are uh, doing. And those electives and those seminars and other classes you take um, allow you to kind of enrich your studio experience and the way you approach your project or the way you uh, kind of design. So that's been really helpful. But yeah, I agree with what Kate said about mm -hmm. there's so many lecture series, um, things to participate in, and uh, committees or uh, TA positions. So I found that I'm busy enough with a full schedule and you know, looking towards the spring of looking at courses and what do I want to be my final electives, it becomes even a challenge to kind of narrow in. So um, it's, it's actually a really good thing that you're so engaged in all of the classes and that they're beneficial to spend all your time on. Um, okay, um, I think um, we're done. We're, we're glad you're watching, and um, we hope that we've answered all of your questions. I'm sure that's not true, but <laughs> you can um, please continue to send us questions uh, about any big thing or little thing. Uh, we want to make sure that um, you have the best possible sense of, of what Columbia UD is about, and um, we hope that it's right for you. So. Um, Great, and, and hopefully if you've made it this far and you are on this uh, webinar, such as it is, I would just say, you know, just to emphasize that um, I believe our application deadline is January 15th, and um, we wish you all the best in preparing your materials, and we really look forward to reviewing your hard work and, and welcoming you here to New York and becoming part of this program. And um, get ready to hit the ground running when you get here. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be waiting with open arms. So thank you for joining.